Hi, Taylor with Brown Eyes here, back again with Andrew from Surefire, and today we're going to be talking about something cool, uh, one of my favorite topics, and that is suppressors. Uh, so before we get into, you know, the product specific details and whatnot, let's, uh, let's talk about applications. Take us through some of the applications for suppressors. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions with them. You know, obviously the, the, the specific term that the ATF uses is silencers. Um, but as you know, that's a little bit misleading just because for the most part, they're not silencing anything. You know what I mean? Typically most suppressors you're trying to achieve just hearing safe, which is about 140 decibels. Right. Um, so silencers can be a little bit misleading and what Hollywood has kind of painted the picture as is it's some assassination tool that you can right. discharge a firearm in public and no one else is going to know that you did. And, and realistically, that's not really the case. I mean, there are some exceptions to that, like 300 blackout subsonics. You can get very, very quiet. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, 22s can be very, very quiet, super fun. Um, but for the most part, it's not what people think. Um, as far as application goes, Number one for me is just hearing protection. You know, I'm, I'm fanatical about protecting my hearing. When I'm shooting unsuppressed, I'm always doubled up, meaning I have in the ear and over the ear, typically. Um, having a suppressor on the firearm is really gonna help for hearing protection, whether it's just general plinking or for a home defense situation where you're grabbing a gun in the middle of the night because you heard a bump in the middle of the night and you might have to uh, discharge a, a firearm in, in you know, confined spaces. Um, you can do some serious damage, especially if there's young, younger ones around. Um, having a suppressor on there can save you uh, quite a bit of uh, hearing damage for sure. Um, outside of that, you know, hunting, um, it's a big application there. Uh, I just kind of got into hunting a little bit. I'm still a, a rookie, but I did manage to get an elk last year. Um, and I was on a couple other hunts with some friends. And, you know, when we shot unsuppressed, the herd scattered. When we shot suppressed, they all stood there. Um, it was a night and day difference. And so that was a, a big advantage. And then also a lot of hunters don't really like to have hearing protection. A lot of them shoot unsuppressed. Right. Um, cumulatively, that's terrible for your hearing. And I want to hear when I get older. So having a suppressor can, can really save you there. So um, those are some of the, the, the main reasons for me. Um, on the tactical side of things like military and law enforcement, it can also be a big help with uh, flash reduction, dust reduction when you're shooting prone. Obviously that's a, that's a benefit for everybody as well. Um, but a big one is flash reduction. It can greatly reduce the amount of flash that the firearm's producing uh, when shooting at night. Okay, yeah, excellent. And you know, a lot of states now, hunting suppressed is legal in most states, Louisiana being one of them. Yep. And uh, you know, I myself, I have, you know, giant ears. I've been blown up a few times. I want to save what little hearing I have left, you know? So yep. uh, definitely a huge benefit there um, just from that aspect. But, yeah. you know, moving on from that, let's, uh, Let's talk, let's talk specifics on products because yep. I know like one thing, one big misconception that we should probably address is that when most people, you know, they're new to suppressors or they're not familiar with them, they jump online, they're shopping for their first suppressor. They're going to be looking just at decibel ratings and that's, that's not the way to shop for it. So that's a, let's, let's talk about that. Yeah, that's a really good point. Most people just like looking at, you know, uh, horsepower on a, on a car, they just look at that number and they think that's the, that's, that's how you figure out how to purchase. That's not a bad idea with the car. So, but with suppressors, there's a lot more, there's many more metrics to kind of measure and figure out what suppressor is best for you. Um, so, you know, obviously sound is one, um, size, weight, durability, point of impact shift, and then the repeatability of the point of impact shift. Um, those are all factors that you should consider. Um, and then, you know, if it's something that matters to you, flash, because um, that's where a lot of people or a lot of the other suppressors that are out there kind of sacrifice performances is they might produce a lot of flash or sparks uh, when it's nighttime. Um, and, you know, most people don't know that until you need to know it, and then that's a bad time to find out. Right. So one thing we pride ourselves in like our mainstay, we make a bunch of different suppressors, but for the most part, you know, our most popular are our SOCOM 556 RC2, uh, our SOCOM 762 RC2 suppressors are kind of our bread and, bread and butter. Um, we have a bunch of other options as well, um, but the SOCOM line of suppressors is really the best combination of all of those metrics. Um, and meaning when you typically add one, you'll, you'll take away from another. So sure. for instance, if you make a suppressor shorter, you're usually gonna add some you know, noise to it. It's gonna go up in your decibel rating. Um, it's gonna usually sacrifice some flash. Um, consequently, in the other direction, you make a suppressor bigger, longer, you're gonna get it quieter, but now you have a bigger suppressor on your firearm. So usually there's no free lunch. Um, we'd like to think we have the best combination as far as like our SOCOM 5.56 RC2 and the Mini 2 suppressors, the best all around fighting suppressors or you know defensive suppressors that there are. Um, they have extremely minimal 
point of impact shift. We test fire every single one from the factory, not just batch testing, but every single suppressor. Uh, we shoot on a, on, a, on a rail gun on a bench, um, unsuppressed and suppressed to make sure that it's less than an inch at 100. Um, and then it's also completely repeatable. So that means if you're bouncing that suppressor around between multiple firearms, you know when you put it back on that specific one, if it was zeroed with it, it's gonna hit exactly where it did before. And that's extremely important, whether it's you know just home defense, plinking, or for uh, hunting, you, you obviously it matters very much to have a precise zero. Um, as far as uh, you know, flash reduction, these are some of the best that are out there. Durability is second to none. They're extremely durable. I mean, you know, our SOCOM 5.56 RC2 is full auto rated. Um, it, it's gonna last longer than several of the barrels that are on your, your gun. We have people that have used them over 100,000 rounds. We don't typically give a round count rating for them um, because <laughs> specifically with firearms, it's not about the miles, it's how hard you drive them. Right. So it's cadence of fire. If you're shooting like a normal cadence of fire for training, um, it'll last you a very, very long time. If you're mag dumping, you know, 100 round mags, uh, and full auto, then obviously you're gonna erode the baffles in that suppressor much more, you know, quickly. So, um, talking about the, the line a little bit, I think that covers most of the, the, the points and the metrics on that. Um, jumping into the line, you know, first up we have our Warden. So this is a uh, uh, blast mitigator, a blast diffuser. Basically you can put this on any of our SOCOM adapters, like our muzzle brakes. Um, you can put it on a flash hider, you can put it on a war comp. Um, it's it was primarily intended for the, the muzzle brakes. Um, the idea being, you know, if you go to a range where you're, you know, maybe shooting prone next to other shooters that are very close to you, a muzzle brake can be a little bit disturbing for the guy next to you. Right. Um, so putting this on directs everything forward, forward of the muzzle, so you don't have that concussion going to the left or the right um, affecting somebody else. If you're shooting in confined spaces, vehicles, and you had a muzzle brake on it, you slap this on, it'll be way nicer to shoot. Uh, again, you're, you're directing all that blast forward. Um, it doesn't do anything for, for reducing flash or anything like that. It, it's, you actually get most uh, a pretty cool fireball out of the front of it, um, but uh, really good for redirecting the, the sound of it. And it doesn't do anything to decrease um, the, the sound at all. It just directs the blast forward. Um, in our 5.56 five, line of suppressors, like on this, this gun right here, that's our mainstay. That's our SOCOM 5.56 five, RC2 suppressor. Um, it's really good for you know 10.3, like a Mark 18, and up. Um, once you get to like, for me, once you get to like a 14 and a half inch gun, I prefer the Mini 2, which is just a little bit shorter. Um, when you go longer in barrel, you can go shorter on the suppressor. You know, it's gonna be a little bit quieter. Um, when you go to a shorter barrel, you can, you can still run a, a Mini 2, just know that you're not gonna be quite in that hearing safe range. For some people, they're completely fine with it. If you're doing a lot of close quarter stuff, you're already gonna be wearing hearing protection. Um, you can get away with the Mini, and that's, a, that's an awesome option for that. Um, the, the RC2 is definitely the, the best performance way to go as far as sound, flash, all that um, for the shorter barrels. We also make, and I don't have one here, an SB2. Um, the SB2 is for nine inches and under for the, like those super, super short guns. Oh, okay. Um, it's just got a, it's basically a normal SOCOM 5.56 five, uh, RC2 with a little bit bigger bore because a lot of times those super short guns have problems stabilizing rounds and you'll get baffle strikes um, destroying the suppressor and also not having a consistent point of impact or aim. So um, like G36Ks and other super short guns, we've seen we've seen that be an issue with uh, certain agencies that we work with and therefore the, uh, the SP2 came about. Um, stepping up, let's see what we got here. So we'll start here. This is the 7.62 RC2 suppressor. Um, this is for you know 7.62 gas guns. You can put it on 7.62 bolt guns. Basically anything that's 7.62, just like the 5.56. We also make uh, a Mini 2 variant of it. Okay. So for um, longer barrels, or, or just because of your performance, your desired performance metrics, um, you can go with a shorter can depending on what you're using it on. Um, these RC line of suppressors, they have like our cupped, vented. Um, baffle design and basically what that is is it, it allows f gas guns gas operated systems um, to cycle better so it doesn't have as much back pressure um, not increasing cyclic rate too much and that was the other thing I should have mentioned earlier when we were talking metrics is reliability is extremely important obviously when you run a suppressor you want to make sure it's not affecting the reliability uh, reliability of the firearm in a negative way um, and we pride ourselves in, in these suppressors are designed to, to function correctly without having to do anything crazy um, to the firearms with um, you know anything specific. We also have a yeah we also have our 7.62 uh, tie suppressor. So this is full titanium, full American titanium actually. 
super lightweight. I believe this is coming in 11 ounces where this is more towards 17. So you shave a lot of weight by going to titanium. Um, obviously you're not as durable as our RC line of suppressors. Um, the RC line of suppressors, I should have mentioned this earlier, it's a lot of information, is a uh, high temperature um, alloy, it's inconel. So um, it's a metal that's very, very, you know, it maintains structural integrity at high temperatures. Formula One exhausts, you know, space shuttle engine nozzles. Basically, you can get it really, really hot, but it maintains its uh, structural integrity. Um, with the titanium, obviously, it's not quite as durable, so this is better for your precision firearms, your bolt guns. Um, you can use it on even like a, you know, DMR type setup, but, uh, it, you know, it's, dur durability is not quite as what it is on the, the high temperature alloys. So, but this is an awesome, this is what I used for my hunt. Super awesome, super uh, really good performance. I used it on a on a 6.5 Tika. Um, and it was way under hearing safe, super quiet, so really, really nice. Um, we also have up front, that's our 300 SPS, uh, purpose built for 300 blackout. And just like, you know, anything 7.62 or 30 caliber and down, you can run it on smaller calibers. And the way our adapters work is, uh, which is our muzzle devices, if you have uh, a 7.62 suppressor and muzzle device, you can put it on one of our 5.56s, but you can't go the other direction. You can't put a 5.56 on a 7.62. Obviously, for safety reasons, it's designed to not mount. But the 300 SPS uh, is purpose-built for, for 300 blackout. It's super quiet with subsonic rounds. It's super fun to shoot. I mean, you hear the, the steel target, if you're shooting steel, sounds louder than the gun itself. I mean, it's, it's a ton of fun. So we also have... Um, some nine millimeter suppressors. We, we have a bunch of different suppressors, but this is kind of the, the, the mainstay product line and, and where most people have confusion as far as which one is best for them. Um, I think one last thing that we should probably touch on is, is how the mount itself works. Um, so, bolt's already locked back to the rear. We'll grab this guy right here. So on the suppressors themselves, there's a locking ring in the rear. So you can hear it ratchet as you tighten it down. Um, and on the, the muzzle attachment, there's a index notch. Typically, if you have it timed correctly when it's attached, it's at the six o'clock or at the bottom of the barrel. So when you slide the suppressor on, you just make sure the locking ring is all the way open, all the way uh, in, the, in the open position. And when I slide it onto the muzzle device, I have the engraving, which is at the top of the suppressor, slightly offset. So I slide it down and then I rotate it towards the 12 and it'll fall into the notch like that. You heard that sound? Yep. And then after it's fallen in the notch, I just tighten it, ratchet all the way on, and you're done. And it's the same process and opposite to take it off. You just push down on this little push button on the locking ring, which undoes the, the ratcheting mechanism, and then you pop it off. So that's, yeah. that's how our fast attach uh, suppressors mount. Um, super, super convenient, especially if you're, you're running suppressors on multiple firearms. Yeah, easy to switch. I mean, you can just switch them out at the range, you know. You don't have to worry about any direct thread shenanigans with your suppressor, you know, pulling off adapters and all kind of stuff like that. Uh, Impact shift as well, you yeah. know, with direct thread, you know, you're going to have some type of shift depending on what torque each each time it was put on. Usually yep. um, this removes all those variables and, and makes it a very reliable mounting platform. Yeah, so not only do you know the benefits of running a Surefire suppressor, but you know how to just shop for suppressors in general now. <laughs> so there you have it. Uh, Andrew, thanks for coming out. Thank you. We appreciate it. And if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.